You know, it's not every day that my homeboy hit me with some different content to talk about. The American Dream, some different shit. What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. And today, I am here to talk about the American Dream. I didn't expect my homeboy to ask me about no shit like this. But, you know, I'm chilling. I got a little bit of time, so why not? And currently, they are having what I think is a Dominican festival. And these folks are turning the fuck up, and they have been turning up all day. But, you know, I'm here with five points to get into. I'm here with a Red Bull, so I got energy and time to talk. So I figured I'd touch on some real shit, you know what I mean? That, you know, he wanted me to talk about how the American dream is basically bullshit. So here we are. I'm going to touch on five things, all right? Now, the first thing we're here to talk about, about the American dream that's a lie, is marriage and relationships. You know, most folks go to college, they get out of college, they meet, they may or may not meet their high school sweetheart in college, they get married and have a couple kids. And I am here to tell you, at least half of that is bullshit. Look, there's no, like, real life experience that teaches you how to navigate a marriage for real. Like, most men are not going to know how to navigate a marriage. And some people, for the most part, you as a man, right? You're going to need to get married and get divorced before you kind of know what the fuck is up with a marriage. And by the time you come out the other end of a marriage, you're going to really see what it's like. Now, as far as relationships, like, your average guy doesn't know how to pick a partner. And it took me going through the ringer to find someone I feel like is very well balanced. Me and my girlfriend can really see her talk about real shit. Watch, I watch like her show. She'll watch stuff that I watch. And I feel like we get along. But, you know, most people, y'all don't hang around nobody for a year. You don't really get to know their family. Because, you know, getting with the family is important. Like, the big, the big lie about the whole being a marriage thing is that most people think they want to get married. They don't actually want to get married. Look. A lot of y'all are going to get married, and you're going to find out that, one, living with another person is a lot of fucking work. Two, raising kids along top of living with another person is a lot of fucking work. You know what I mean? Trying to pay bills with raising kids while living with another person is a lot of work. And there's no class for it. There's nothing that you can really go through that can really teach you what you're getting yourself involved in when it comes to, like, being married with a wife and two children. Now, I will say this, I think love kind of carries you through a lot of that, but like for the most part, there's nothing that you can really go through or no class you can take that can really prepare you for the shit that's going to actually happen when you actually marry a person. I'm going to just tackle this from both sides of the married angle, right? Just real quick because I'm not going to drag this out. One, you as a woman. You, chances are a lot of women are not going to want to change their last name. A lot of y'all tend to push back against that. At least in this new day and age. The women before y'all used to kind of didn't have no problem with it. And some girls in this day and age don't have no problem with it. But a lot of y'all are not necessarily... How can I say it? Y'all are not really built to be wives. Like, y'all think y'all want to be wives. No, y'all just want to have... Y'all want to have weddings. A lot of y'all really want to have weddings. Once you have a kid... Here's the thing about having a kid. Unless your husband is the type of motherfucker that has his own business and he can pop home at any time, chances are you're going to be the one with that kid the majority of the time. A lot of women say they want kids. A lot of y'all are not prepared for that work that it takes to actually raise that kid. I'm just being honest with you. That's not me trying to be rude. That's not me trying to be disrespectful. Kids are work. <laughs> like, kids are work for real. Like, and they're not the type of work you can stop. Like, okay, when you work a regular job, you can stop working your regular job and go home and then that be the end of it. When you start this whole shit, like you want to be a wife and everything. And look, there's nothing wrong with the, being a wife if you're prepared for the actual position of it. You know what I mean? But a lot of y'all don't necessarily want to be married like you think you do. You just think you want to be married. Like you get, you're going to get that man. You're going to get those kids. That man's going to ask you to sit your ass down somewhere, which a lot of y'all don't want to fucking do. You, you, he's going to require you to get off Instagram and start showing your ass and you can't go out and party as much because you got kids to take care of. And a lot of y'all are not prepared to make that type of sacrifice. Like, second, a lot of y'all are not prepared to sleep with one man for that long. Like, 
y'all want to be married, y'all want to be together, you you say these vows and all this other stuff. Then when it comes to find that, you know, because this is the thing, when y'all, a lot of y'all want to get married, y'all don't want him fucking nobody else. But you ain't necessarily trying to, like, not fuck no other dudes either. Like, a lot of y'all are not prepared to make that type of commitment to a man. Like, a lot of y'all still figuring it out. So, again, if you know it may not be you and it may not be in your best interest to really stick with a motherfucker long term, and I mean really grind it out with him when he's up, when he's down, when he's left, when he's right, don't fucking do it, bro. Like, don't sign no papers. Don't jump into this shit blindfolded. Look, it's the same thing for the men, too. Like, most men, what what most men do when they want to get married, right? They want to get married, but they really get married to please the woman. A lot of y'all are getting married to make your wives happy. You don't actually want to get married. If you say, if you were a fly on the wall at a bar with four dudes at a table, you'd find out very quickly that most men don't want to get married, and women, most often than not, pressure them into it because they feel like they want the commitment. You know what I mean? I think men are a little bit more practical in this end, where it's like, y'all know, men, men kind of access it a little bit better and know that the marriages work. But women's emotions be so in it that you feel compelled to do it because you feel like you're letting her down and you're disappointing her or making her feel bad or whatever the case may be. Again, a lot of y'all women push these marriages and then you find out what this shit really about and you be ready to run for the hills. But as far as the man side of the coin, look, a lot of y'all be asking for, you know, be wanting to marry these girls because one, you don't want outside. Two, you don't want to fucking nobody else. You know what I mean? And three, you think it's what you really want to make her happy. You're not doing it for yourself. And then another point on top of that, right? When it comes to, I want to say emotions, right? Sorry, I had some hair on my tongue. But when it comes to like emotions, right? A lot of you niggas are not trying to deal with a woman's emotions day in, day out, day in and day out. I've lived with a woman before I got on my current girlfriend. So it's like, I kind of already knew that it was going to come with that. But when you doing this shit for the first time, you moving in with a wife and kids, or she got kids from some other marriage or something like that, nigga, that shit going to whoop your motherfucking ass. It's going to burn you the fuck out. And you're going to be one of them kind of men that's sitting in the car outside for 30 minutes before you walk into the house. On top of that, right? Most men don't necessarily want to fuck just woman, woman for the rest of their lives. And I'm not being honest about that. Like, that's not to say that being with one woman is a bad thing. It's not. But most of you niggas don't want to actually put that type of commitment to one woman. I think most men can love one woman, but they can't just sleep with one woman for the rest of their lives. That's a decision you got to be prepared to make when you decide to marry somebody. Like, a lot of y'all are not trying to make a decision that big and you be knowing that that's what it will require but a lot of y'all still slip up i'm not saying women don't cheat women cheat just as much but i'm saying the men part because men are a lot more loud and a lot more sloppy about it but most men are not trying to get married you're not trying to really do it it's too much work for most of you you're not going to be able to deal with it or handle it you're going to get tired of it after a while now point number two career path in college listen When you are 18 coming out of high school, chances are you don't know what the fuck you want to do with your life. Really, you're not going to know. Like, it's a very slim percentage of people that are actually going to be like, oh, I want to actually, like, work for NASA and be a guy assigned to repairing a rocket. Like, most of you are not going to know that. Most of you, what most people do when they get out of high school is they fumble around for a little while, they party their fucking ass off. And eventually life kicks them in their motherfucking ass. And eventually you have to learn to get a part of something or be involved with something. You know what I mean? For me personally, I stumbled my way into trucking. Like, my dad was a truck driver. But I always wanted to avoid truck driving because I always, like, I got a way to word it. My cousin loved truck driving. He always loved going out with my dad in the big truck. I always hated it when I was a kid because he was always taking me away from the Xbox because the way he did it was like, oh, we finna go to the store and we be gone for two damn days. I used to hate that shit, right? And I end up stumbling my way into driving the truck, right? And it wasn't that I didn't try everything else first. I tried other stuff first. Like, I went to, I worked for the prison. I ain't like working for the prison. 
I was in the Navy for about eight years. I didn't like the Navy. I had time to talk to me crazy. I did nuclear for a while. And it's not that I didn't like nuclear. Nuclear wasn't the worst choice in the world, but it required too much wear and tear on my car. I was always here, there. And then the issues I was having my baby mama, I couldn't ever keep no money. I just felt like I was always spinning my wheels, especially the fact that I was dealing with my baby mama. It always made me feel like I was spinning my wheels. But as far as a career path and career choice, you're not gonna fucking know. What? You're not gonna fucking know. And then second, on top of that, like, let's say you go to college, right? College low-key is one of the biggest scams America has. Like, because America low-key runs on debt. So it's like, you're going to college to try to, you know, go for underwater basket weaving because that's your passion. You get a degree in that shit, you find the degree don't make you no fucking money. And even if the degree make you money, you still got to pay back thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of debt, right? You're better off either A, getting a job, going, or B, building a business, or going to get a trade. And that motherfucking mob is starting to piss me off. Furthermore, college debt, right? Let's talk about college debt real quick. You cannot get rid of college debt. College debt and child support will never go away. <laughs> if you have college debt, you might as well get ready to live with it or either learn to pay for it. Here's the thing. America is, it does dumb shit, but America is not completely dumb, right? Meaning that they know majority of people in their, you know, teens or, you know, early 20s go to college. They know this. America, these white folks that run America, they know this shit, right? Ain't no way in hell you got to go to college and be like, oh, I'm going to get my loan forgiven. Not saying it don't happen because I'm not the expert here, but you're going to go to college, get your loan forgiven, or, you know, you're going to just get rid of college debt and just skate off with a degree. Like, and you're not gonna pay America back for that? Yeah, all right. All right. Number three, children. Now, I could have mentioned all. I, I want to expand more on this from the point that, from the first point. Children, right? Children are a slippery slope, if you ask me. Right? My personal opinion: the daughter that I got is enough. I never was someone that wanted a bunch of kids. And I tried to do the whole, you know, get married, be the husband thing. My mama didn't want to do it. Again, like I said in point, the point earlier, most of y'all are not ready to get married. And the funny part about that shit is she begged me for that shit. She begged me up and down. She asked me for that shit every single day. And then when she got it, she couldn't really handle it. Now, where does that leave children at? Most times when y'all motherfuckers come out of college and you don't have no walk around sense, or you don't know much about relationships. Because when it comes to relationships, you got to fumble around and fuck off for a minute. I would recommend most people fuck around for a while. And then get a feel for what kind of person they, you know, mesh with. Or what kind of person you may be. You may be someone that wants to fumble around in the dark for a little while. You may be someone that, you know, you actually want to settle down and have, get married and have a couple kids. But you won't know that unless you live and fuck up in life a little bit, right? Because here's the thing about, you know, children. You can fix college debt. You can even, you know, fix a repair car. You know what I mean? You can, shit, you can get married and get divorced. Once you have them kids, that's it. Like, once you have them kids, you are stuck. I won't even say stuck. You have to deal with those kids. You are going to have to raise those kids until they're big. And even, you know, I'm 34, right? And I ain't called my mom in God knows how long. I ain't called my dad in God knows how long. But it wasn't until maybe three years ago that I stopped calling him on the regular for shit. Like... What I'm saying is when you have kids, you're going to always be raising kids to some degree. They're going to always come to you, need something from you, whatever the case may be. Raising children is a sacrifice. And I would say most people in this day and age don't have it in them to sacrifice to raise kids. Y'all just be fucking and then turn around and become parents. Like, I don't really hear too much about planned pregnancy and no shit like that. And at this point in my life, personally... I am more than willing to go under the knife and get but and get a vasectomy. Like I'm more than willing to do that. Because I'm so done with the kid thing. Look, kids are not bad people. I don't want to be biologically tied to a person like that. I'm sorry the shit I went through. My baby mama was enough. Like, you know, I love the shit out of my kid. I think she's one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me. But the hell I had to go through to get to this point is uncalled for. And I don't recommend that for nobody, because this is the thing. You get married to a motherfucker. And it starts out one way and it ends another. Like, your divorce could just be plain divorce if you were the first to get divorced. Once you start throwing the kids in and all this other shit, and who get health care, who take care of the kids, who the kid gonna stay with, 
who gonna do? They treat that kid like it's a motherfucking piece of property and they divide it up that way, all right? So before you motherfuckers just go fucking any kind of way or doing any kind of way or just shooting off in women and, you know, y'all women wanting to clamp down on a man when he's catching a nut, you gonna fuck around and find out the hard way when you get them kids, all right? That shit is gonna clip your wings and that shit is not gonna be about you anymore. Again, kids are not negative, but if you're trying to really make some money, and you ain't got your shit together like that, I would not recommend having kids. I just, I, I wouldn't. It's a lot on a person when they're not ready for it. Now, number four lie the American dream has told you. The dream house and the dream car. Truthfully be told, you don't need a gigantic ass house. You know what I mean? If you get a big house, you better make sure you can pay for it. What I mean by pay for it is this. You can get a little apartment. You know, seven, eight hundred dollars, you know, a month, maybe nine hundred dollars a month, right? The maintenance takes care of an apartment. When you get a house, you gotta call a contractor to fix that, right? Now, the thing that the American dream tells you is like, you know, a big family, big house, nice car. You get a big house. A big house typically comes with big maintenance. Listen, we moved into my, our landlord's house. I didn't know I was this fucking handy. <laughs> I didn't know I could fix this much shit. I'm steady fixing shit in the floor. There's like always some shit going on with the wall. Some shit's always fucking up. Some mold. Just, just little dumb shit that happens in the house, right? And this house that we're in is 50 years old, and there's always some shit going wrong with it. Or like a fit, fridge breaks and stuff. I didn't know I was just good with my hands. So I mean, me personally, I'm not in rush for a big ass house. If anything, me and my girlfriend are low key thinking about downsizing just to pay less rent, like. The house is nice and it's big and it has three rooms, but the shit you gotta pay for, stop scratching the couch. Um, the shit you gotta pay for when you deal with this motherfucker, you know what I mean? That's a level of bullshit, you know? Second, on top of that, you gotta call contractors. A contractor could raise anywhere from like $500 to $2,000 just to fix a minor problem in a house. I mean, I've seen my landlord get, you know, livid. Like, not like livid, livid. But I can tell she's pissed off when she got to call a contractor or call any sort of person to fix a house. You know, that's someone you got to pay out of pocket to fix. So, when people be talking this jumping into real estate shit, I just be looking at them crazy because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, my sister fucks with risk real estate and she's like, that shit is no joke. That's not no shit you just dive into any kind of way. But, like, as far as the house, man, just get something comfortable that you can live with. You don't have to do all this big, you know, grand old shit that motherfuckers be into. Now, as far as a car is concerned, listen, a car is like a house just with wheels. But the shit that you fix on it is smaller. Now, I've had, I think up to this point, 10 cars, right? And it's the same thing with cars. Unless you have the money to fix that motherfucker, like... What I'm saying is don't go get no motherfucking 2015, well, 2023 Hummer truck and think you're going to just ride around and nothing's going to break. Now, more than likely, it ain't going to be a whole lot of problems with a newer vehicle. But there have been cases where you buy a vehicle and the shit be fucked up too. You know what I mean? Just based off the shit being manufactured wrong or just, you know, you might buy a vehicle that someone drove before and it just be, you know, having already previously, you know, having problems with it. Like... Vehicles is another one. Like, you don't gotta get no extravagant ass vehicle. What I'm basically getting at here is that you don't gotta, like, keep up with the Joneses when it comes to your lifestyle. You don't have to do that. Like, it's not one of those things you gotta, like, go out and get a really, really, really fly ass car to tell everybody else that you got a fly ass car because when you got a fly ass car, you gotta pay fly ass maintenance. Like, the oil change, I think, on a Ferrari is like $300. Like, it is never that serious. And then you gotta have a car that's one of them kind of vehicles, you know, that does the shit you needed to do. Like up here, it snows. So it's like, you basically have to have an SUV or better to get through the winter. So, I mean, as far as vehicles, man, get one that's appropriate for you. I mean, I'm not telling motherfuckers what to do. If you wanna get something high and flashy, go ahead. It's your life, do what the fuck you wanna do. But what I'm saying is, is that no one's gonna sit there and rag on you and give you a hard time if you just get something that's comfortable for yourself. It's not that deep. You know what I mean? Car repair is a motherfucker. Just saying. Now, my fifth and last one is going to be 
finances. That's credit, taxes, all that good shit. Here's the thing about finances, right? With most your average American. Most motherfuckers spend money to make it look like they got money. When in reality, they don't really have money. All right? Most people, when you grow up, you're not really taught a whole lot about financial literacy because most people that you're raised by don't have it themselves. Like, my mom was a lunch lady. My dad, I think at his height, was like a truck driver or, you know, a machine operator. Like, he made money, but my dad was the kind of person that fucked off money. He just did whatever the fuck he wanted to do with his money. You know, when I look back at it, I think my dad could have paid off a lot of stuff that we had going on in my mom's house if he just sat the fuck down. But, you know, when you're not, you know, I want to say groomed with financial literacy, you don't know a whole lot about it. Like, most people just know to save their money. Most people don't have other people they can turn to to start a business. Like, you know, you kind of have to have multiple streams of income in this day and age to kind of get ahead, right? Or some sort of something that, you know, backs you financially. But most people don't have that. Most people, the most they know is working jobs. Most people don't even know about credit. Like, I'm not the greatest with credit either. So I'm not going to sit here and bombard you like I just know the ins and outs of it completely. But what I will say is this. Credit is one of those things that you fuck up, it takes a long time to fix it. And the downside about that is, it's like between credit and taxes and balancing a checkbook. Well, you don't really have to balance a checkbook in this day and age. Account kind of does it for you. But what I'm saying is, Financial literacy is the one of the things in school that they don't teach you. Like, for some reason, motherfuckers tell you social studies, science, you know, all some chromosomes and bullshit, gym, PE. You don't really need none of that shit for the real world unless you are going for something degree specific. Now, you do need math, but even with math, we have smartphones now, so motherfuckers don't need to know math the same way. You can just Google the answer to anything. When's the last time you ran into a calculus problem in the real world? Chances are you haven't. You know what I mean? But paying paying your taxes and you know things like that and saving money and having money put up for a rainy day. You know what I mean? Most people get to a point where they're middle class. I consider myself middle class because we make money, but we're not like living this gigantic high life. And to be honest with you, I don't think my me and my girlfriend are one of those kind of people that we just need to live like this super lavish life. If anything. We're more, I think we're more chill kind of people. So, I mean, I appreciate that because most people that I see talking about finances and everything, you know, y'all want motherfuckers to live a life that they ain't got the money to pay for. Like, most men can't pay for all the stuff that you think that they can pay for. It's not realistic. Like, asking a man to pay $1,500 worth of rent, two, $400, $300 car payments, plus insurance, plus motherfucking maintenance, Plus getting motherfucking contractors to come in here and fix the house. The shit that y'all ask for isn't realistic. You know what I mean? Most of, Your average guy is not going to have that type of money to fix those type of problems. Like, my sister works in real estate. She work, does a lot of working with finances and fixing credit like that. You know what I mean? And I got a cousin that, you know, owns a business. Well, is trying to figure his business out. And the thing about, you know, owning businesses and stuff like that is that it's a lot of fucking work. Like, put it this way. If you have a partner that doesn't understand the amount of work that you got to do to actually get ahead, like, then you are going to be in for a rough ride because you're going to have one person pulling this way, another person pulling that way. Finances is one of those things that can get, like, it can literally make a break of your relationship. Like, my girlfriend tells me about a lot of girls that, you know, in these groups that she's in. That, you know, their boyfriends don't want to work. And I feel like that's the craziest shit for a man to not maintain no type of job. Like, how are you? I don't even consider, I want to say I don't consider you a man without a job. But I understand getting a job sometimes for some people is difficult. I just personally don't side with that. You know, the whole not working while having a girlfriend that is working. That to me feels weird. I've never been that kind of guy. But what I'm saying is when it's like, you know. Let's say you're trying to build finance, you're trying to get ahead, you're trying to, like, have a better life. It takes two people to do that. One person can't be a party animal and the other person want to save because the person that's the party animal is going to more than likely be the person that wants to go out and spend money on bullshit while the other person wants to save. Now, you can have both, but it takes a balance to do so. But what I'm saying is, like, if you don't have, like, a community of people that are about finance, right? Because, I mean... 
When I name when I name my cousin, I name my sister. Those are the two people that come off the top of my head that are actually kind of in that space a little bit. But everybody's in their own little direction, right? I feel like I do all right for myself, you know, trucking and everything. It's not a bad job, but I mean, I feel like I could do better. Personally, if you're asking me what I think about myself, I want to eventually work my way out of this truck, you know, just to, I don't know, have my time to put energy into other shit or just to have the energy to have fitness the way I want to. You know what I mean? But financial literacy is a part of that. But it's, I don't know, financial literacy is one of those things it's very difficult to do because it takes a group of people to do it. Meaning like, if you're a single guy and you're trying to date, you, it's hard for you to date and have a bunch of women, you know, and have fun with those girls and still save and keep money at the same time. You kind of have to pick one and stick with it, low key. But yeah, man, those are the five things I think kind of make the American dream alive. Like, chasing after all this shit, a lot of this stuff that we go through to, you know, to get to where we want to get to in America. Like, just living in this house, right? This shit is nice as fuck. But, you know, the more you have something, the more you feel like either, you know what, I'm comfortable here and I want more, or this is good, but I can use a little bit less of it. You know what I mean? I think the more you live, the more you experience, you become to find out, you know, where you're comfortable at. Instead of trying to live up to this big thing that, you know, society pushes on you to have a, a wife and kids, a nice car, or a big house, you know? A lot of this stuff is not necessarily, to, you know, necessarily to live. You can just downsize and get some regular shit. Like, you can get one woman that loves you. You don't have to chase a bunch of chicks. Or you don't have to, like, get married if you don't want to. If you don't want to, if you're a woman and you don't want to have kids. What I'm saying is, the long story short, you don't have to do a lot of this shit if you don't fucking feel like it. All right? What I'm saying is tailor your lifestyle to you personally and, you know, the things that you personally can handle. Because you're going to have to do the maintenance on whatever life that you live or have built. So, this is one of the ones my homeboy challenged me with. And to be honest with you, this is a little bit harder to make than the average video that he sends me. But, you know, I kind of want to tackle it. So, but I'm going to get up and go to the gym and get my life together. Y'all do what y'all do. All right. Y'all have a good day. And first and foremost and last and foremost. Have a dialogue before you get on getting your feelings about this shit. Like, it's not that serious. But again, y'all have a good day.